everybody, my name is Kara Brown, I am an urban fantasy author, and I'm here to talk about a series bible. Now, I'm talking about a series bible because I did a poll on Twitter and I gave some options and folks wanted me to talk about how to make a series bible, so I'm going to go over uh, a couple of the fundamentals involving series bible, kind of show you how to make one and talk about a few programs that you can use. Uh, I personally use a series bible because I have a series and it just it's very helpful to help me keep track of everything that's going on, but rather than hear me talk more about that, let's just go and start the video. So before I dive into the what of a series Bible, I just want to talk about the who a little bit. Now the people I know who use a series Bible are authors and writers, writers who do television shows. I have definitely met some webcomic artists or just comic artists in general who use a series Bible. And I have definitely met some people who create YouTube content shows that use this as well. And in fact, a lot of the people who do use a series Bible are usually part of a team. They have multiple writers and it's just something that they use to help up with the continuity. Now I'm probably missing out on a different, a couple different groups of people who use a series Bible but off the top of my head these are the people I know with 110% certainty use a series Bible now what is a series Bible so a series Bible is something that is a major reference tool for a given project of some sort I mentioned earlier that a lot of writers for television shows use this if you guys know anything about television shows a lot of them have a bunch of different writers they all have a different style and one of the things in order to help keep the continuity of the show is that they have a series Bible in the series Bible we are looking at things like the outline for the story we are looking for uh, characters and what characters do what and what character traits they have and all that stuff it's basically just the thing to make sure that it stays the same even though that there are different people in it now in a series Bible you can have a lot of different things now what I have right here are kind of like the big things that I use when it comes to making a series Bible keep in mind I'm an author I don't produce television shows or anything like that but in my series Bible I have the outline for my overall story not my books not just one book but like all of the books to and then I also have a thing that helps me keep continuity and when I'm talking about continuity I'm talking about the timeline of events sometimes it's clothes sometimes it's manners a lot of times uh, I'm using this to help me out with the grammar so when you are writing something that's fiction you are gonna have a slightly different grammar in there than what would be in typical English so if you take a look right there, I have grammar and then I have mythics and pucks because that's used to represent a, a type of ethnic group in my book. So I have to remember that those are capitalized. And then under that, I have speech tags because if you happen to read my first book, you know that I have a lot of conversations that are happening in there. Sometimes they are verbal, sometimes they are telepathic. And this just kind of helps me make sure that all my speech tags are going to be the same from the first book all the way to the end of the book. You can also throw in a couple other things like your log line or the elevator pitch for your book. And then it's also something that I personally use to help me track character progression and development. And a little bit later in this video, I'm actually going to show you what I'm talking about. So if you have questions about that, we'll get there in just a second. A character Bible can pretty much have whatever you want to have in there to just help you out with whatever it is that you need in your story. On the left hand side I have a whole bunch of other stuff that I put into a series Bible and you'll notice that I have character Bible in both and the reason for that is because in my series Bible my character stuff takes up pretty much the bulk of my entire series Bible just because I have a lot of them they all have change that's going on and I just use basically my series Bible to track who's doing what when they're doing how do they change all that stuff but you can put anything in there I also have a tab um, in my series Bible for all the research that I do sometimes it's snippets that I have taken uh, from articles sometimes it's a photocopy of a page from an encyclopedia or whatever it needs to be but I have it in there along with the source or the citation for it as well so in case I need to go and find that reference again I can go and find it you can do other things in there like you can put links to YouTube videos if you have a digital one it really can just have anything that you want now moving on from that you can make your series Bible pretty much however you want I have some digital examples that you guys can use that I personally have tried and I found were useful but if you don't want to do anything digital and you want something physical you can honestly just get some paper and a three ring notebook and you can write everything in there if that's what you want to do or you can make it in Word and print it out and still put it in the three ring notebook I mean however you want to do it there's really no wrong way to have your series Bible it's just a personal preference thing I know there's a couple of of, uh, I think I've seen them on Etsy and I may have seen them in a couple YouTube videos don't quote me on that but I know that there are some uh, 
like printouts that you can get where you can fill in the information if that's something that appeals to you. I don't have those references on hand because that's just not something that I needed at this particular moment. But what I do want to focus your attention on is that I have two softwares that are in bold. Now, on the very bottom, I have Google Sites. Now, Google Sites is going to be the option that I'm going to show you in this video about how to make your own digital series Bible, if that's something that interests you. And then on the top is Campfire. Now, if you had to pick between either of those, and I'm going to tell you if you have money to go get Campfire. I'm not going to review Campfire in this video because reviewing Campfire is going to take me a while. It's a really extensive program that involves world building and tracking so much stuff. I absolutely love it, but I'm not going to spend the time reviewing this because this video is going to already be long enough with Google Sites, but that will be a product review that I do later. But in instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the free resource that you can use to go ahead and have an online version of your series Bible that you can possibly print out later if that's something that you want to do. Before I dive too much into that, I do want to address this question of should you have a series Bible? If you have one book, it really depends. If you're writing like some like 200,000 word manuscript where you have a lot of stuff going on, you might want one just to help you track a lot of the things that are going on. If you are looking to get traditionally published and you're hoping that the first book that you are giving to your publisher is going to become a series, I would tell you to just kind of semi wait on that because the truth of the matter is, is that if you get your first book with a publisher and the first book doesn't do well, they're not going to renew your contract for the rest of your series. And you may end up, you know, self-publishing those later books if that's something that you really want to do. Now, if you are self-published and you know that you're going to write this nine plus series of books involving your your character doing XYZ, then yeah, you can sit down, you can make this series Bible because you're you are in control of your destiny and you know that's what you're going to do. I'm just I just want you guys to kind of keep that in mind when you're thinking about if you need a series Bible or not. With that said though, I'm going to go ahead and switch the screen over to my desktop so that way you guys can actually see how to do this with the Googles. Alright, so welcome to my Google Drive. You've been here once before if you are a regular viewer. If not, hey, uh, this is my Google Drive where it's super organized to the point where it it's too organized, but that's not what we're going to talk about. That's a personal problem. What I'm going to tell you guys to do if you decide to do this with the Google Sites is you're going to go right here to New, you're going to go down to More, and you are going to find the Sites button and you're going to click on it. Now when you do this, it's going to make the website in your drive. So uh, I already have this thing already set up, but I do want to show you guys some of the fundamentals about how to make this so that way you are not, you know, walking into this tube line. The first page you're going to have is your homepage. You can type pretty much whatever you want in it, right? So you can put your title, you can do, uh, you know, the series title, I mean, whatever it is that you want it to be. And it's up to you. And the nice thing about Google Sites is you don't have to worry about being published because if you're going to publish, you're you're going to know because you're going to click the button. So you don't have to worry about other people finding your stuff if that's a concern. Google Sites does have some templates that you can use. They're right here on the side. And if that's something that you want to do, awesome. You can click on it and it just puts the stuff over. But if you're like, no, I'm not so interested in that, you can delete it. Or if you're like, I like this template and I want that template and I want that template, but you know, on further review, I don't want this template. It's just really customizable and it's really easy to use. It's got a little bit of a minimalist feel to it, but uh, when you want to add pages, it's going to look a little bit like this. So you're going to come right here uh, to where I clicked on pages and then you're going to go down here to the add a new page. And you can type whatever you want. Let's type in characters. So you type in characters. It's going to take a moment to load, so you do have to be a little patient. And it's going to appear right here. Now, if you want to have a tab for characters, uh, you're going to go over to these three buttons right here, and you are going to click Add Subpage. And you're going to put in the name of whatever character that you want. And it's going to go ahead, and it's going to populate down here as well. And you can do that pretty much as many times as you want. Now, what I will say is that you can only do a sub page. I think it's one, two, three. You can only do it three times. Um, so you've got this one and then you've got like the two more that you can do after this. So that's pretty much all you can do before the site's like, no, you're done. Uh, what I do know is that when it comes to this top bar right here, when you start to have, I think it's five pages on the top, then they start to kind of semi-disappear off the side. Uh, I'll kind of show you one of my other series Bibles so you can kind of see what it looks like if there's too much stuff going on. But that's going to be what that looks like. I 
do want to show you guys some of the other features that you can do when you are kind of customizing these pages. It can be a little overwhelming at first. I'm just going to kind of give you the down and dirty. And if it's not covered in this video, you may have to Google it. But hopefully the stuff that I show you is going to be enough. When you are basically making pages, it's going to look like a blank template. It's going to have nothing here. It's like that intimidating first page of your novel that you're trying to write. When you come over here, let's so let's say I wanted to make this like a character profile, right? So, you know, basic info. And then I could type in things like uh, name. Well, no, I don't need to type in name because that's supposed to be right here, right? So I can put in like age, gender, uh, hobbies, power. Well, not powers because I'm going to cover that later. But you can, you can cover some of the basic info that you need for your characters. You can put in a picture right here. That's hopefully I don't have a too embarrassing picture. Uh, desktop downloads. Uh, so let's say that it's going to look like my dog, right? Okay, so Ranger is in here, so we'll just call this Ranger now. Now, one thing I will show you, the fact that I changed um, the name of the character right here, but it didn't change right here, you are going to have to actually double-click on that, and you are going to have to do it that way. So, again, that's just how that works. Uh, now, let's go back to the insert. So, you have a lot of things that you can do in here. You can add, uh, you can add table contents. You can add buttons, uh, and buttons look a lot like this, where you type in like I don't know, like uh, shot records. This is turning into a thing for my dogs. Uh, you can add in shot records, and then you can put in a link. Uh, if you don't already have a link, or you're linking this to a different part of the page, you can click on that. If you have an outside link, you need to copy that over before you click on this. But you know, just for the sake of doing whatever, let's just put this right here. And it's down here, but I can move it right here. And if you guys take a look, there's some grid lines that are here. That's gonna basically tell you where you can put some stuff at, how wide it can be, and all that. So you know, I can have shot records. I can do like vet visits let's say like this is really is turning into a thing for my dog so let's see I need to add a text box so vet info I know this is supposed to be for character stuff just work with me okay guys um, I can do vet info and then I can put like contact information I could put the map location of my vet in there I can do calendar appointments I can also add in dividers they look a lot like this and you can pretty much, and it, it's not really noticeable on here, but if you publish the page, it's going to be on there. And yeah, it's really versatile. You can add in Google Docs, like just all of this stuff. I would encourage you if you decide that you want to do this to play around with it and see how you like it. It's all pretty easy to use. You just kind of have to dive in there and use it just a little tiny bit. So before I show you how to use this in an actual book writing capacity and not Caro like thinking about her dogs too much, um, I went in here and I threw in some extra pages and you can actually move these pages wherever you want. So if you didn't want them to be in the character thing and you wanted them to be their own page, it will come out here. Uh, if you wanted world building to be in stuff and things, you can just basically drag it over to stuff and things and then it becomes a sub page. So again, as I said earlier, really customizable, really flexible and super easy to use. So let's go ahead and just move to the actual example that I made you guys. All right, so what I have here for the purpose of this video is I have made a series Bible involving that goddess I was talking about when I was doing the how to make a, a, a character video. And ironically enough, as I started making this series Bible, I came to realize that the book that I was initially writing for her wasn't actually the first book. It was the fourth book in whatever series that she was going to be part of. So uh, it, Series Bibles can be useful for helping you plot out that kind of thing. Now, I'm just going to go over some of these pages, how they work, how you can use them. And keep in mind, this is just how I do things. If you're like, no, that's not, that's just too much for me. That's not what I want to do. You can do it however you want. I'm just kind of throwing out some ideas for you to use. And you can take them, leave them, do whatever you want with them. Now, what we have here is the home page, right? It's the first page that you come on. And what I do with my home pages here in the Google sites is that I have uh, a place where I do recent updates. So anytime I come in here and I update the site, what I do is I just kind of put in here what I updated. Why do I do that? Because I get really extensive with these. Sometimes I forget what I did and having like a little quick like uh, timeline for me to refer to is really helpful. So I have the most recent update here and then all my past updates are down here. Now, up here on the top, I only have three tabs. I only have three tabs with lots of subpages, I know. Um, and the first tab I have is the books. And then the second one are going to be all the characters that are going to be involved in the series and then the world building after that. Now, 
just quick thing, I am not going to go over extensively how I use all of these things right here in the world building because I honestly think that they deserve their own video. If you would like me to do a video on that or, or any of these, just leave a thing down in the comment. I am more than happy to do that. Otherwise, I'm just going to leave it up to Twitter to figure out what I'm going to be making next week. Now, what I'm going to go over with you guys real quick is just kind of like the book tab. And in the book tab, um, you can do a lot of different things. How I categorize them is I'll have the main book and let's say if I have like a side book or anything like that, I'll have that listed under that book. Just helps me compartmentalize a little bit. And when you're on these, you just click on this and you go right back. Uh, if you, when you're setting up your books, I'm gonna use Stray Goddess as an example. There's, again, Google site super customizable. You can do whatever you want with it. What I like to do with my book pages like this is I will have a couple different things on here. One, I'm going to have a workflow for my for my story so that way I know where I am in the process of it. And I'm not covering the workflow today either. It's just I have a link to it here. Um, I will have the one page synopsis of my book here. Highly encourage you to always have a one page synopsis because if you have to send that to a publisher, it's nice to have. So I will have it here. And then I will have the scene outline. If you, any of you are interested about how the scene outline works at the end of the video, I have a link to how the spreadsheet works. You are more than welcome to use it. And uh, you can add in about as much stuff as you want. If you want to put in uh, by chapters in here for the buttons, you can do that. If you want to put the whole Google Doc right here, you can do that as well. Um, there really no wrong answers here with what you want to do. A couple other things that you could do is you could add in like, you know, pictures of your characters. You could add your book aesthetics. You can put in your log line. You can put in your, your marketing info. You can really do a lot with this. I've just kind of, for the sake of making this, showed you how to put it together. Now, if you're going to do stuff for marketing, I would just kind of encourage you to put that more at the top and do it kind of in a button way like this, just because um, I usually like the book stuff to just stay focused on the books and not the marketing for the book. But again, like I said, that's a personal preference. You guys can do whatever you want with that. Uh, actually, in fact, you can just come over here and you can just put in marketing. I think I might do this for my own series Bible and you can put that right there and you're going to put it under book two. That's my fault because that was the thing I had selected. But lucky for me, I can just drag that over and now it's its own little window. So you can do whatever you want for marketing in that bubble. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at a character sheet. And we're going to use Holly as an example. I gave her a name, guys. Her name is Holly. I'm super proud of myself. So. These character sheets, again, just like pretty much anything else on this website, can be whatever you want them to be. It's kind of really awesome. And what I've done here is that I have the character name on here, and then I have it uh, I have it pretty much set up like this, where the basic info is right here. You guys are going to see that there's a tarot card right here, and that's just because Holly's actually going to be part of my overall universe with uh, the Ghost Walker Chronicles, and they all have a tarot card assigned to them. What her card is, I don't know yet. I'll get back to you on that. But we're going to move on with the rest of this. So... In my series Bible, these are the things that I usually like to have. The basic info right here. I like to have their personalities on here as well. So, you know, what kind of makes, you know, how do they tick? What makes them happy? What makes them sad? What are their faults? What are their virtues? Who are they as a person? I like to have right here. After that, I have the physical attributes. Uh, you know, what do they look like? Height, weight, what do they wear? All that stuff. Uh, if they've got like special birthmarks or, you know, very, or something that's unique about them, throw that in there too. This next one doesn't apply to the contemporary fiction, but it does apply to contemporary fantasy when it comes to powers and abilities. So if your character has some abnormal ability, this is a good place to list it. You know, are, do they have hand-to-hand -hand combat? Do they have magical powers? If they do, what are those magical powers? How do they work? Or you can just state what magic system it's part of. And then over here in this thing where it says magic system, you can dive into that. Or you can put a link to it. Again, super flexible. You can do whatever you want. With backstories, I am pretty concise with this. I know some people like to do the 20 page long backstories for their characters I really just have a paragraph for three parts of their lives I have a paragraph about their childhood because I think that what happens in childhood does affect the the mentality that people have today I also write a paragraph about stuff that happens in early adulthood high school times because that was traumatic and that affects a lot of how we decide to interact with people write down the trust issues so I think that's really important to include and then the last thing I have is a one paragraph about recent history so that's usually anywhere between like six months in a year before the story takes place because that kind of helps me understand where that character is coming from and how they're going to be in the story. 
after that, I got relationships. So for any of the main characters in the book that interact with each other, I try to have their relationships in here. So in this book that I am talking about, uh, Holly has uh, not relationships like love relationships, which is kind of like friendships and all that stuff. I tried to define that a little bit more. So these are the characters that she mostly interacts with, uh, with the exception of three who I didn't want to throw in here because I didn't want spoilers. But those are all going to be people. So I'm going to talk about the type of relationship that they have, how she feels about that character, how they regard them. And you know what's really fun about that is like let's say like for example like Holly really likes Bones and she thinks Bones is really amazing, but then you go to Bones's character sheet and Bones is like thinks that she's like scum of the earth, right? So you know the the feeling doesn't have to be mutual, but it's just good to kind of talk about how these characters feel about each other because it does shape the way that their interactions are. And the last thing that I personally like to add in is going to be the series development and the character arc for this character in each of the books. So in book one, two, and three, how did this character change from the start to the end of the book? I harp pretty hard on that fact, but that's definitely going to be a thing that I continue to harp about. Now, if you do have a lot of characters, there's a couple different things that you can do for that. Obviously, if you had like 50 characters and you went down here, it's just going to go all the way down and it's going to be a nightmare to scroll through. So what I do is I actually make groups. So I've got Greeks and I've got ghosts, right? So if I have a whole bunch of ghost characters, this helps me kind of figure out who they are and where they are. If I, again, right here, Greeks, I've got a whole bunch of characters here. Uh, so if you have groups established like that in your story, you can do that too. Or you can do something along the lines of this is a main character, these are side characters, these are whatever characters. You can do that. One thing that I would actually encourage you to do, and it's a resource that I'm going to have available for you guys down in the comments if that's something that you're interested in, is when you have like a page like this that just says characters, first off, it's its own page. So you can click on it and it's going to be whatever you put in here. What I put on here is I put on the bird eye view of all the characters. So that way just helps me track kind of what they're doing overall and I'll have their names their physical descriptions in case I forget because sometimes I do uh, along with their role in the story what race they are and then the very quick down and dirty of what they what they contributed to the book so some I know that some of you are making bug eyes like how do I in one sentence say how they def, you know contributed to the book but that will actually help you lot later on because when you start talking to agents and publishers and they ask you these questions being able to give a really concise answers can be very impressive so consider this practice uh, so again just want to go over this so I got characters description role race I've also got book one two and then you can put the titles down here something else that you can do is and this helps me out a little bit is right here where you guys see the blocked out stuff the block out stuff basically means that that character is just not present at all in that book and that is a just a, a nice visual thing for me to see but you can do other things too now, if you're just a color code theme and you like to type in like when they were having romance, you can put this one as red. When they were depressed, this one can be like blue. I mean, what, however you want to do that. Feel free. It's your spreadsheet. Do whatever you want with it. Uh, now, one thing that you will notice, though, is that I can't really interact with this spreadsheet because it's in, it's in the drive. So if you want to go in there and you want to change stuff around, you're going to click on this right here. And it's going to open the spreadsheet. So, you know, earlier I said, like, you know, let's say that they were feeling really sad in this one. Sad blue is a sad color for me. Sorry, y'all. Uh, but in this one, they had, like, some romance stuff. Uh, pink, that seems like a good one. And then here they had, like, I don't know, like, good stuff happened, right? You can color code that however you want. You can also type in, like, words. Again, do whatever you want. And the nice thing is that when you do that and you come back over here and you go, it's going to transfer over. Sometimes you may have to refresh the page. Sometimes you may not. But uh, again, it's just one of the things I do like about Google Drive where it does all kind of interconnect that way. And with all that being said, that's pretty much all the essential stuff that you can do with a series Bible. I really hope that me showing you how to use the Google Slides is a useful free alternative. I know that in this particular industry we don't always have a lot to work with so part of what I like to do is just kind of throw free resources at you. Now if you do want to you know do the printed version of this you can either make your own templates. I know that there are already templates that are out there. You can just do a quick little Google search for them um, or you can yeah, I don't know just whatever floats your boat. It's the really nice thing about having a series Bible is that it's pretty much going to be however you want it to be. And there's no wrong way to do it. So don't even begin to stress that kind of stuff. Just remember that the series Bible is really there to help you with continuity. And it is there to help you just keep some things in order. So that way you don't have to reread your 
couple more 150 page manuscript at any given time. But that is the end of the video. If you are new and listening to me for the first time and you're kind of curious if I know what I'm talking about when it comes to this writer nonsense, I do have a newsletter that if you sign up for it, you get access to a free short story. So you can read it, peruse it, see if I know my stuff when it comes to any of this writing nonsense that I share with you. And if you happen to like it, you can maybe check out the book that I've got too, maybe leave a review. I'm not going to tell you what to do. It would just make me happy. And the last thing that I want to bring up is that the podcast that I have together with Tamara called Author 2 Noob is out today. So if you are interested in finding out a little bit more about some of the events that's going on, including how COPA is affecting us, that's going to be in there. But that's really all I have for you today. I thank you guys so much for coming around and hearing what I have to say. And I'll talk to you all again real soon.